Hunter Lawrence, Joe Shimoda, and Jet Lawrence have made a habit of standing on the 250 podium together, and that includes our first moto today at Washougal, where they went 1-2-3 with Hunter getting the edge. It's time to decide the overall 250 Moto 2 coming up. It's round eight of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing, the Motosport.com, Washougal National, presented by Peterson Cat, Jason Wygant, and the nine-time AMA National Champ and Washington State local native Ryan Villapoto here. And Jason Thomas will be reporting from the racetrack. We've had phenomenal racing in the 250s this year, but finally, Hunter able to overcome his brother Jet in a straight up fight. Yeah, put a great moto in that first moto, was able to come away with the win, rode a clean race. Uh, let's see if he can do it again. Let's see if he can make it uh, a 1-1 one -one on the day. Let's show you how he did that earlier today, a little over an hour ago, in the 251st moto. First of all, Joe Shimoda has been working on the starts, made some changes, got it figured out. Shimoda puts the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki up front early here on the number 30. He's got both Lawrence's Hunter on the 96 Jet on the number one right with him. Hunter would just edge ahead of Jet here and then go after Shimoda and makes this move on the outside. Yeah, right up the outside, controlling this inside, coming into the whoops here. Uh, Joe tried to run it in on him a little bit, but Hunter was able to hold his line, bumped off the track a little bit, but back on. So from there, Hunter had the lead. Joe kept it close for a while, and then Chet able to make a move here. He's just gonna run down the inside and stand up his buddy to make the pass, boom. And that was it for the battle for second. You see Hunter was not too far ahead, but Jet was not able to run him down. So we've seen a couple of head-to-head -head battles to the Lawrence brothers. Twice it has gone in the direction of Jet Lawrence. This time it's Hunter, the older brother, takes the Moto win. You see Jet, he said he backed it down in the last two laps. We'll see in Moto2 how this one turns out with the rematch. Shimoda, of course, third. Justin Cooper was fourth. Seth Hammaker rounded out the top five. Brown, Volan, Hampshire, Swole. And Joshua Barisi on the AEO KTM rounded out the top 10. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas with a Fly Racing pre-race report. All week long, the talk has been how can Hunter Lawrence reel back in those 27 points he's lost over the last couple of weeks. Now, I asked Hunter this morning, how are you going to do it? And he basically said it's easy. You just have to win. So in the late, the words of late great Al Davis, just win, baby. That's the only way you can get it done. All right, doing it for the Raiders here. Uh, easier said than done. <laughs> just win. <laughs> it is. It's, a, it's, it's, it's easy to talk about it, but getting it done um, is a lot harder. But he's in a great position. First gate pick for this second moto. And they're getting the hot lap in right now, checking out where what's been groomed, what's been watered, um, and the dangerous areas and what to stay away from. All right, so Hunter Lawrence looking for his first 1-1 of the year. Has not won an overall for a weekend yet in 2022, but he sure looked good at Moto 1. We'll see if he can deliver. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Pierce Brown giving you a look with the GoPro 10 camera mounted on the front of his Trolley Designs Red Bull Gas Gas. See what it's like to air it out here at Washougal. Camera looks good. Thanks to GoPro for our course preview. We'll give you another look at the track with the MX versus ATV Legends track map here from Washougal. RV, what do you see? Yeah, I just I see a great track. It's a phenomenal place to come and race amongst all these trees. A um, little bit hard to pass on, but uh, so far we've seen some great racing from both motos, first motos. Absolutely. Hunter Lawrence getting the first moto win, but a good battle with his brother Jet and also their buddy Joe Shimoda has uh, been really racking up the podiums as of late. The only disappointment today is that the 59 of Levi Kitchen, the local native, he's got a cast on that left wrist. Levi's from Washougal. He used to be able to ride to the track straight from his house. Can't race today with the wrist injury. 
but he did lead a group of local military veterans on a site lap today. That was part of opening ceremonies. So that is really cool. And we have American service members stationed on U.S. Navy ships at sea and in more than 170 countries overseas watching today's broadcast live on the American Forces Network. We salute your service. Doing it one arm there, Levi Kitchen. Hope to see him back before the season is done. Thinks he can get that wrist healed up. Time, time for the uh, K-10 keys to the boat, Ryan. Yeah, well, I think number one thing that we just added to this is making your passes very quick. Um, I've already seen on uh, camera that they've been watering the track, so that's really going to play a factor in this uh, these second motos. And then the shadows. Sun's directly above you now, so you're, the shadows are really going to come into play. You can see it on the starting line there with that big fir tree off to the right. Those shadows are all through the trees, so you guys, their guys are going to have to really pay attention. We will have two weekends off, and then the stretch run for this championship begins. So. Keep tuning in on Saturdays here on Mav TV or Mav TV on Flow Racing. Our next race is the famous Unadilla National from New Berlin, New York. It'll be Saturday, August 13th as we go back to Easter time. It'll start at 1 o'clock Eastern again, Saturday, August 13th, when we resume Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. But not before we complete the race day from Washougal. We're halfway through. First motors are done. Second motos are here. Can Hunter Lawrence get his first overall win of the year? His brother Jet. Still picking an outside gate pick. It didn't work from a Moto 1, but he's going to try again in Moto 2. There's Hunter right next to the box. Fired yeah. up. Yeah, I like where Hunter's at. It's uh, it's it's still wide enough to, to be able to carry the speed, but Jet's exactly in the same gate, and so is uh, Joe. He's That's where he pulled the whole shot from. All right, Joe on the 30. Let's see if he can make it three good starts in a row. Now they switch to these starting blocks. He's got the metal pads under his boots to get a better launch. Fly Racing 32nd card is up. 30 minutes and two laps of Moto2 here at Washougal, the Battle of the Lawrence Brothers, along with their friend Joe Shimoda. It has been fun to watch week in and week out. Can Hunter turn the tables and get the momentum back on his side after his brothers won the last two races in this series? Here we go for Washougal. Shimoda again. Getting it edged out, though, into the first turn. Hunter on the inside of him. And is that Justin Cooper? Yes, Justin Cooper back to his old tricks. A great starter on the Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing Machine. The 32 leads him up top. Yeah, Jet looked like you came out of the uh, first turn around sixth place. Got but a not little too bit of work to do. Yeah, not too much. In fact, going for the pass right now. Yep, right on. Uh, he's right all over Hunter. Hunter's all over Joe also. And Cooper leads the way. That was the one rider we thought might be in the in the battle up front in Moto 1. It wasn't quite there. Let's see what he can do by leading. Hunter already wants to make passes on Joe. Man, I, I, all I can say is Joe is riding very well right now, and his consistency with his starts, that's four starts in a row now that he's, that he's been well, and uh, riding really well also. The intensity is what I, what I really noticed from, uh, from uh, Shimoda. Fifth hole shot this season from Justin Cooper. He is just a master of qualifying and good starts. See how well he can control this race from the front. Jet has snuck his way into fourth here to battle Hunter. Shimoda second, Hamaker fifth, looking for a solid day there. It was Brandon Ray who had a good start. Nice job by him and the Bud Builders. Bike, he is seventh right now. Hampshire is eighth. Brown and Verizzi round out the top ten. But right now, Justin Cooper, who was your fast qualifier today, showing you why, with an awesome opening lap. Yeah, it looks like he's just putting a little gap in between uh, himself and uh, Shimoda here. So let's see if he can keep building that gap and uh, hold off these guys. One lap down, Justin Cooper leads them here at Washougal and already opened it up to 1.4 seconds. Shimoda had to take some heat from Hunter Lawrence. He stretched it back out. But it is early days here in Moto2. And you can see where they have thrown water down at times. So is this almost an uh, experiment for the riders to, to <laughs> well, figure it out? Well, I mean, obviously they had their sight lap. They can see it. But that's a slow sight lap. You can, you definitely know how slip. You can see how slippery it is, or where how wet it is. But at this, at these, at the race pace that they're running right now, it's it's really hard to uh, to be able to navigate that. So being on the brakes braking with your tire mostly on the ground. And what I mean by that is, is more braking vertically. If you're on the bikes on a lean and you're trying to get, ask full braking stopping power out of your tires, it, it's probably going to wash out. So braking with the bike vertical is, is what you want to do in this condition. 
And it's stretched out right now, a little bit of calm before the storm. What direction will it go? Will it be Jet Lawrence attacking Hunter Lawrence? Will it be Hunter Lawrence attacking Shimoda? Will somebody go after the leader? Justin Cooper. It's a pretty frantic first lap. But right now, everyone is settled in. Yeah, it looks like they're just, they're all just trying to find themselves right now. Um, Justin's riding really well out front. Looks like Jet's trying to put a little pressure on Hunter right now. Joe's just detached from Cooper a little bit. Let's see if he can close that gap. Seth Hamaker having a great afternoon here at Washougal, his first visit to the track. He did the exact same thing in Moto 1. He's able to keep Shimoda and the Lawrence's in sight for probably the first half which is really all you can ask for because they have been the front runners in this series. And he's doing it right now. Running solid in fifth. Voland is sixth. And it looks like Jet, oh, no, he was closing on Hunter, made a mistake. Yeah, it ran a little wide there. Must have missed his line there coming in on that rut and then just had to push out wide. So a little bit of less pressure now applied to Hunter. He go back after Joe Shibota. As you guys can see, it's, uh, you know, the, with the shadows in the water, second motos now, they're not as intense. Uh, they're not riding as intense. Oh, Jet off the track. In uh oh the Can he get back on in front of Hamaker? Hamaker right there. Definitely so, lost some time there. Two times on this lap that he's made some errors. I mean, he's voiced his opinion that he does. He's not, this isn't his favorite place. That's so right. um, if he's going to take a, a, a loss, I mean, this would be the place you want to take it. Absolutely, yes. He has said not his favorite track. He said it's tight and kind of flat and high speed. He prefers the rougher stuff. So right now on the ropes as far as trying to win another overall today, as far as the points are concerned, he doesn't have to worry that much. But he has allowed Hunter, his brother, to get back within one race's worth of points with that first moto win. So you don't want to hand over too much momentum. No, one mistake, one issue that puts him, that puts Hunter in the lead. Yeah, that's right, and, and you know how quickly it can happen because it happened already this year. Exactly. When he had an engine malfunction and lost 25 points right there. His points lead currently is 24. Into the back section of the track. Saw some Australian flags flying earlier this weekend back there for the Australian Lawrence brothers. Right now they've got their work cut out for him. Shimoda riding well and Cooper this is much more of a vintage Justin Cooper ride. Yeah, he's riding really well. Got that whole shot that he's used to getting. Clear air up front right now and just riding really well. The good line selection. And when you're up front like this, you can ride your own pace. Uh, you don't have to take, you can take the lines you want to take. And you just tend to ride a little more free. No doubt Cooper does his best work from the front. You look at, uh, everybody says the start is critical, but you know, Eli Tomac has, has proven you could start top five. He can and come through. Different riders approach it different ways, but there is no doubt Cooper is a good start, ride well early kind of guy. And man, is he doing that right now? Starting to stretch it just a little over Shimoda and the rest of the field. So into the shadows we go. Now it's pretty funny, we held a show here at the track for the fans last night. And the shadows are from these very famous, very beautiful evergreens here in Washington State. And we said, what do you fans think? Do we, should we take the trees out, get rid of the shadows? And we almost got booed off the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're not going <laughs> to. It's iconic. Yeah, it's iconic. You're not going to get him to cut those trees down. Some of those are probably close to, I don't know, 60, 70 years old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's tough for the riders, but it's just one of the challenges we've come to expect here at Washougal. Cooper, almost up to three seconds now. I don't know where this was at Moto 1. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, like we've talked before, getting that whole shot. It puts you in a, a little bit different uh, mindset, and, and, and you're able to, just like I said, ride your own race, ride clean, go as fast as you want. Um, and you're not eating all that roost. Your goggles aren't getting hammered. You know what what the uh, goggle manufacturers end up doing is they'll put some Vaseline in the bottom of them because these the bikes are pushing out so much horsepower, and they, push the, they throw that roost at you so hard. Plus, you're hitting it, you know, running along 30, 40 miles an hour. It makes its way into the goggles. So right now, he's just got clear track. He's able to ride his own pace. Been a decent season for Cooper, but rough by his standards. He's generally there battling for the championship. But he had a really serious foot injury back in December that we thought would keep him out of this series. He missed all of Monster Energy Supercross. He was able to heal up quickly enough to get back. 
Uh, but I don't think he's quite where he wanted to be when this series began. You're kind of wondering if by the end of the year, you'll start seeing the full Justin Cooper. Maybe that's what's happening right now. Yeah, for sure. I think with a foot injury like he had, um, I know they put plates and, and, and um, pins in yep. it and a bunch of stuff. You know, a big surgery done on his foot. Uh, Off-season probably didn't go, or I wouldn't say off-season, but that pre pre preparation for outdoors probably yep. didn't go as planned or yep. as he would, would have liked. And then what it led to is a lot of chasing of the motorcycle. He went 1-1 at the last round last year, rode that exact setup at round one and struggled big time. So I, I've been asking almost everybody we've had here in the booth this year, when you're not quite 100%, is the bike also not going to feel right? Because maybe you're not at the, the pace you were. Uh, exactly. So these bikes are set up so um, precise, meaning with suspension, if you can't ride 100%, the bike's going to feel really stiff and it's not going to work underneath you. So, And if you can't put in that 100%, push that motorcy motorcycle to the limit on how the suspension's set up, to be rode on the limit, the thing's gonna feel like a two by four. <laughs> uh, so they did huge changes between rounds one and two for Cooper. It's been better since, but this is a big, big gain. Doesn't have any moto wins yet this year. A lot of podiums. Had a moto podium at our last race, but it's pulling away right now. 3.5 seconds is the gap with Cooper and Shimoda. Hey, Ryan Villapoto, not the only local legend here. Chuck Sun is here, and Jason Thomas has him. Take it, JT. You got that right. I am here with a legend, a man that had his own jump at this racetrack. Chuck Sun, can you tell us a little bit about the history of that Chuck Sun jump? We're not here anymore, but we're all positioning to get it back. Well, the jump had a lot to do with the local people that are behind you and they want to support you and to see you repeat the win. And it came down to the last lap between Brock and I, and I really wanted to give the fans a win, and we were three turns from the finish, and the throttle stuck on the largest jump on the track, and I was so far in the air, I knew I couldn't save it, so I jumped off the back. It was a heartbreaker, but it stayed a memory here at Wachugal for 25 years, and longer than most soap operas, so it was pretty cool. Well, we're in the middle of this 250 moto, and these guys are so fast these days. What do you make of the current crop of uh, these, these youngsters that are out here today? Well, the conditions right now in the second moto you'd normally see in the first moto because it was overcast all morning. So it's probably the best conditions we've ever seen it. And it's about that time of year when you start talking about MX Donations and they've kind of been ignored because they want the 450 guys to drop down. And I think uh, Cooper might be serving notice that he is worthy of a membership on the donations team. I was voting for Levi Kitchen, and we wish him a, a quick recovery. But the conditions are probably the best they've been here at Washougal today, and it's fantastic racing. Well, Chuck's on making a great point. Justin Cooper probably feeling a little slighted with the uh, that motocross of nation snub so far, and maybe making a point. Yeah, a couple things to follow up uh, with Chuck's on there, former 500 national champ. Uh, as soon as Cooper started pulling away, our producer and her headsets like, hey, maybe that's a case for motocross of nations because they pretty much decided the American 250 contingent. They're not getting it done. We got a rider from Japan and two Australians top three in the series, so they're looking at 450 riders dropping down. This Justin Cooper, this Justin Cooper with a four second lead, that's a little different story. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, putting somebody, having a rider come down isn't ideal. Um, okay. Got to ride a, a, a whole different platform. Mm -hmm. Not to say it couldn't be done, but if the Justin Cooper we see right now shows up at Motocross the Nations, um, I think we're gonna, we'll are gonna we be sitting really, really nicely. Big, big battle right now between Shimoda and Hunter Lawrence. This, see the overall points as they run right now, Hunter would still have the overall, but he wants every point in every moto that he can get to close in on his brother. So Beta Motorcycles can back here in the back, and Hunter decided it's time to go, and he's going to try an outside back there. Don't see that work much. Oh, almost came together. He was going to try to go up the inside of him, and Joe knew it was coming, so he got on the brakes extra hard, and then just held him up a little bit and forced uh, Hunter to the outside. Hunter going to reset and go back after Shimoda. Another thing Chuck Sun said there, you were talking about the overcast conditions as well and how that affects the racetrack that we had all morning with the overcast. Totally. It's, uh, it's a huge help for this track because, as you can see, if we would have had sun out right in the morning, we would have 
they would have been putting water, a, a lot of water on the track right after practices and trying to keep that moisture in it. But since we had overcast till about 12 o'clock, um, it kept the moisture in the track. And now, like, like Chuck said, he goes, these are conditions you normally see in the first moto, but we're lucky enough to have them here in the second moto, which is promoting that much more better racing. Oh yeah, because guess what? Hunter is not only all over Shimoda, but Chet is still lurking back there as well. The difference is that in this moto, they're all losing time to Justin Cooper. It has been these three primarily, especially the last couple weeks, hogging all the podium spots and the race wins. That's right, yeah. It's uh, Justin's up to 4.8 seconds Man. now. Totally different rider than the fifth place finish that he had in Moto1. Look at this. Jed might be the fastest of this trio, unless Hunter can find more pace if he can get around. Shimoda, now he's going to try the outside. That's risky out there. Crosses up in front of Jet. Yeah, it took the long way around there. Um, before long here, Jet's going to be all over these and Hunter's uh, all over these guys, and Hunter's going to have to ride defensively. Oh, just fantastic racing all afternoon here at Washougal. All three motos we've had so far. Oh, no! Hunter throws it away! And that's going to affect the overall. Oh, man. We know this track is slick. Just like that, just lays it over, and uh, his hopes for the overall are, are pretty much gone at this point. He got up quickly. We'll see how quickly when we get the gap. Take us through this, RV. Yeah, it just comes in here, takes that inside line. It looks like he just starts to push the front. These guys hold their feet on the pegs for so long, which is most of the time really well, but like the case with Eli in Moto1, the case with Hunter right there, oh. if they start to lose it a little bit, they have to take their foot off the peg, where if the foot would have already been out, that he might not have, he would have made a mistake, but he might not have went down. Yeah, a lot of the uh, legends that we brought in the boots, such as yourself commenting on how they keep the feet on the pegs much longer now, but they're okay, there is a downside. So right now, Justin Cooper, would actually tie Hunter Lawrence in points for the day, and the second moto would be the tiebreaker. I'm sorry, I said Cooper was uh, fifth in moto one, he was fourth. So he would have a 4-1, but there's much to play for here. First, certainly, first of all, Chet Lawrence trying to make the pass on Shimoda for second. That could change things. We're 15 minutes into this. 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on your motorcycle insurance with a call to Geico. Which way is this going to break if Jet makes the pass on Joe? It will move him from 42 points for the day to 44, and it would again give him the overall win. It seems like no matter what unfolds, Jet is in position to get the overall this year. You know, it's a smart riding by him, puts himself always in a good position. Um, you know, some people may say that's luck, and I, I believe there's a little bit of luck into some of these things, you know, because it just, it's just the way it is, but it's a lot of hard work and just smart riding by Jet. Yeah, he's avoided the big mistakes yep. all year, and he's allowed the others to make them. But he's got to get around Shimoda. we got a rider down in this corner. Okay, they're able to get by it. So Cooper probably doesn't know that he's making a bid for the overall win right now. He would certainly be satisfied to just get his first moto win of the year. Meanwhile, the battle is on between Shimoda and Jet Lawrence. Good stuff. Yeah. Jet has definitely ramped it up lately, last couple laps. Yeah, let's see if he can, and one of the keys to the moto that I had put in this is making your passes quick and making them stick. So, uh, you know, like we've seen, we've only seen a few passing areas on this track today. One before, but the whoops there, and then the new section coming out of the new section there, it's, uh, it's really tough to pass. So when Jet, Bridges this gap, and he has that opening. He's got to move on it right away. Lap traffic there. They're both able to get by. Jet right to the rear wheel of Shimoda right now. So it's an overall win on the line if Jet can make the move. Just not quite close enough. I'll tell you what. Joe has improved massively. Everyone is saying that, but he is at the point now where Okay, I think maybe earlier in the year, the Lawrence brothers came in as the favorites in this series, but it is almost even up. They get him sometimes as Joe really throws it big into that jump. Uh, but he is no pushover any longer against either one of them. No, it's it, the biggest thing that I notice with Joe right now is, is he's obviously, he's he's been riding well. He's riding phenomenal right now, but his intensity is is there. He's able to... 
he's able to capitalize on on little mistakes that maybe Hunter or Jet make. But the biggest thing is he's not losing touch with these guys. Like he's able to fend off, uh, you know, uh, Jet right now. Uh, they're doing the yo-yo effect. I know Cooper's out front right now, but still, he's his intensity is there, and that's what I think he's always been lacking. Yeah, been doing some work with his new trainer and coach, Nick Way, a rider or an ex-rider that you know well. Been hanging out at Way's track in Michigan. He's got the Michigan Mafia logo on his butt patch. And uh, you know Nick Way, and he said really the thing he's been trying to do is get Joe out of his comfort zone and, and make him uncomfortable. Exactly. And, and what we're seeing right now is, is he's, I think he's come out of his shell. Um, I think we're seeing a new, a new Joe. Um, you know, it, it, he's, he's riding, like I said, really well. He's able to push his limits. He's, we haven't seen him ride like this, I don't know, other than Whoa. the last three, four rounds. No, you're right. He's definitely stepped up the game, and he needs to. His jet is trying to make passes everywhere now around Washugal. Big power move around the outside. Can Jet get the job done? No. Shimoda shuts him off again. Up horsepower hill. Fantastic racing. I thought he was going to make a run around, yep. get the, get him around the outside, but Joe was able to hold him off. But Jet's got the inside Ooh, here. Ooh, this could be it right here. Jet's on the inside. Nothing Joe can do about it. Jet Lawrence makes the pass. And with that, he's going to shoot from fourth overall to first. Still a long way to go, though. 11 minutes and two laps. Jet, I don't know if he even knows that's for the overall. Might just be thinking, I just want to make passes. Meanwhile, Hunter Lawrence. He's matching them on lap times. But the problem is he's about six seconds back of the two of them. We update the overall points. So now Jet would be your overall winner by one point over Justin Cooper if we total up both motos. Let's see if Joe can stay with Jet now. Set it back down. What do you got, JT? Well, I highly doubt that Jet Lawrence knows he's in the overall winning position. He'd probably need an abacus to figure that out mid-race. But I think all he cares about right now is keeping his bike in front of the 96. And as long as he does that, the rest will fall into place. No doubt about it. And he's got a buffer now with Shimoda between he and his brother Hunter. He might actually outscore him by a point on the day if it ends this way. It's a big if, though, in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. We're going to take a break here from Washugal. And then take you to the checkered flag here live on MAV TV as Chet Lawrence once again in control of the 250 class. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy, unleash the beast. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross here, Washougal, Washington, just outside of Portland, Oregon, and Justin Cooper has figured it out. Was good for most of the season, couple of podium finishes, but has not been able to get a win yet. He's trying to get his first moto win of the year, but it is not quite over. There is Jet Lawrence, your series leader and defending champ, trying to make a run at Cooper late. It was about five seconds, now it's four. Show you the motorsport.com whole shot replay. Here's how Justin Cooper got control. Down the center, just gonna edge out Hunter Lawrence. Yeah, I think Jet was a little bit too far outside with the jump that he had. And Justin was able to just come up the inside there, control the line across the whole shot. There it was. And will the gap stabilize or can Jet continue to close in by a second or so per lap? If so, he could get it down to a battle as the two lap board comes out. Yeah, it was two, two laps ago. He did, got, has two seconds on him. Now it's a second. We'll see what this lap pulls in. Uh, it's going to come down to the checkers to see what, what's going to happen here. All right, it's not over. And Jet Lawrence has left Joe Shimoda in the dust. Open it up almost three seconds on him right now. But it's a hard one to say with 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 uh, Jet being as composed as he is and as mature as he is as a young rider, um, he might be totally content where he's at um, with points because uh, Coop's not in it for for the championship yep. right now. Uh, Jet sitting in the driver's seat. He's even in control of the weekends overall, and he's got his brother Hunter, who's second in the series, covered as well. We'll see if his natural pace just brings him up to Cooper. Will he put in the full send to get there? 
Just going super deep into that sand. Yeah. Oh, That's got to be a really landing. cool section. And there are, again, the overall points for the weekend. Jet Lawrence over Cooper and then Hunter Lawrence. A little bit of lap traffic. I'll tell you one thing about Justin Cooper. There might not be a rider who is affected more by the start in this series. Again, fourth in Moto1. I'm sure there was something else in addition, maybe a bike change or something, or he just felt better. Uh, but the difference in Justin Cooper when he can lead and when he has to make passes, everyone obviously is affected by that, but it's big with him. It, it is big. It is really big. It's uh, something that he's going to have to work on once he moves up to the 450 class. What do you think, JT? Yeah, I think it really becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. These guys are great starters their entire life, so all they know is running out front. And you put them in 25th place on the first lap, and they really don't know how to move forward. On the other side of that coin, the perpetual bad starters, all they've ever done is work forward. You give them a whole shot, and sometimes they clam up and don't really know how to handle that either. No doubt. And uh, for Cooper, yeah, he's a totally different rider when he has clear racetrack. Jet is closing, but not as much now. No, it's it's kind of stabilized a little bit quicker, um, you know. But like I said, he doesn't. He's not showing that he's urgent, you know, his urgency to to, to bridge that gap to to Justin. So, in my opinion, I think he's just waiting this race out. He's going to get the overall. He probably doesn't know that, but he's in the points lead right now. He's in. in everything's going in his direction. Now, another thing to note: if Hunter Lawrence were able to get to Shimoda and pass him. He would take the overall win back away from his brother, but it has been almost identical. He has been about six seconds away from Shimoda since he fell down. Yeah, it's it's, it's sometimes it's really hard to regroup and uh, after a fall like that in that position and and try to bridge that gap, especially with somebody like Joe that's riding so good right now. So we'll try to give you this gap first of all between Jet Lawrence and Shimoda here on the 30. The lap rider in between them. That's the 310 of Kai Aeo. And then we'll show you the gap between Shimoda and Hunter Lawrence. This would be it. If Hunter could somehow get to Shimoda and take third away, he would then get the overall with the 1-3. Right now he's sitting on a 1-4 in the two motos. Maybe his hope is this. Shimoda no longer has Jet Lawrence in sight. So Shimoda's in a bit of a no-man's land right now. He has no reason to push. Hunter has every reason. He has every reason, but I, but I can guarantee you, when he's, if that were to happen and he still steps up at the front of the podium, you're not going to see a very happy uh, Hunter with a 4-1 with a or 1-4. No, 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 exactly. Uh, but also, if he can get to Shimoda and he is closing, We've seen Shimoda can fend them off pretty good. It would be pretty wild to pass them that late. Yeah, it would be. It's gonna cut. We have two minutes and 50 seconds left, so Hunter's gonna have to make an aggressive charge to bridge that gap, let alone pass him. Um, that's gonna be a whole nother feat. He just ran a 217.9. Shimoda went to 19.3. So about a second and a half quicker was Hunter over Shimoda. He's digging. Yeah, I don't know if he knows the math. It might just be for points, but he's going for it. You can see. Can Hunter Lawrence dig out his first overall win of the year? He was in position for it. He fell down, and he's going for it late with what should be three laps to go. At the base of Horsepower Hill, there's Shimoda, and there's Lawrence. Not over. No, one little mistake by, by Joe will uh, allow Hunter to really close that gap much sooner. Oh, put him in position to hopefully make a pass. Went a little bit deep off of that single. He is flying right now. And I love both Lawrence's, by the way. Turned some braking bumps into a beautiful little double at the bottom going into those uh, switchbacks. So Hunter has definitely found his groove here, but is it too late? Man, that turn right there is so tricky. Every every guy, Hunter just it did is. it right after. Yeah, they, they come out, they're in this big, deep rut, and then it fades to nothing. It fades to, like, this ice sheet, and they just they, they can't get the, stop the bike from really, like, whiplashing them right there. Hunter Lawrence, can he get it done? Can he get the Shimoda? Can he pressure him? Little head shake there from Hunter. Woo! He's pushing it. There's no doubt. 
The bars bouncing around in his hands there with the head shake. We go into the shadows. He's digging deep. And you can see what was about a six second gap between he and Shimoda. He's cut it in half. It's down to 3.1. That's the good news. The bad news is running out of time. There's Shimoda held up by some lap traffic. Oh, Hunter is much closer. A relentless attack from Hunter Lawrence just digging so deep here. Clock didn't expire. So there's still going to be three to go. So one more lap for Hunter to try to go after Shimoda and make this pass and get the overall. Man, I just watched Hunter there. They are using every bit of this track. You have those yellow markers there that are like, you know, track markers. Um, and they actually can bend over. You're really not supposed to go on the other side of them, clearly, obviously, but uh, they are using every bit of real estate on that track. And just explain why you do that, especially late in the day. Yeah, you're trying to, these guys are trying to just fi find the traction, get out of the rough sections. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's reasons why we try to use every bit of real estate on a motorcycle track. Um, you know, getting out of people's roost and, and finding that smooth line. Hunter continuing to close. Got it down to 2.2 seconds on Shimoda now. And we're coming into the, some tight seconds, section, sections of the track, uh, and we got some lap riders. Yeah, that slowed up Shimoda. So, see if Hunter can avoid that. For the most part, he's able to survive that exchange. I don't think he lost as much as Shimoda did. Oh, Ooh, that Close was tight. there with that yeah. lap jet. And you're talking about that corner there. It's so shiny in that run. He's done it. He is there. He has Shimoda in his sights. What a charge. A furious last two, three laps from Hunter Lawrence to get it back in play. Oh, you know he's motivated. He's had several weekends where the race win could have been his. And by the way, guys, they're coming up that straightaway right there to that floater. Fourth gear wide open to that jump. 450s and 250s. They, wow. are, they are hauling wow. through that section. Wow. Meanwhile, Cooper is stretching it back out. Jet has given up on going for the moto win. Justin Cooper is looking for his first of the year. But this is the critical position. If Hunter Lawrence can get to third, he will be the overall winner today. He's got to get around this 30 of Shimoda. He's got two laps to do it. Wheel to wheel we go. And Ryan Villapoto, you've been saying it all weekend. Passing is not easy out here. Can Hunter figure something out and figure it out quickly? Oh, lap rider got right in the way of Hunter. He wasn't able to go to the inside. He's going to have to make a move here really quick. Lost a little bit of ground there. We have two laps to go. That's what Joe needed right there. Takes the pressure off. Can he weather this storm? Right now we're looking at Jet Lawrence with the overall win with a pair of second place finishes. Hunter's right back on Shimoda's rear wheel. Completely different lines here. Let's see where Hunter goes. Oh, they're gonna both go inside. Good stuff here, JT. Watch Hunter Lawrence's mechanic give him the signal that he needed the pass for the overall win. So that's what I was curious about, if Hunter would understand the relevance of this pass, and he absolutely does now. All right, he's got the carrot right in front of him. Can he go and get Shimoda? Hunter's got a really good line right after Horsepower Hill. He goes to the outside, but stays kind of to the middle and is able to close up on, on uh, Joe. He's got an opening on the inside, not quite close enough. Joe knows he's there now. Hunter Lawrence, what a comeback from a crash. Had a six second deficit to overcome. Lap and a half to try to make the pass. Shimoda sideways out of that corner. Yeah, it's like ice right there. Every time it happens when they exit that corner. And there's nothing you can do about it because they're coming out of that rut. They're trying to get as much traction and throttle to the ground. And then it leaves traction to slip like a hard pack section. Here we go, back to the top. Does Lawrence have a spot? He was able to pass Shimoda for the lead in Moto1. A few corners away from this. Yeah, Hunter's really good in this section here. This is where, and he's going outside before the whoops. Following Shimoda through here. Let's see if he sets it up. This corner, and then the next one will lead us to the whoops section. There he goes to the outside. Let's see if he can get a run through the whoops. 
She's trying to go wherever Shimoda does not go. White flag is out. Overall win on the line. If Hunter Lawrence can make this pass, Justin Cooper is set. Almost nine seconds up on Jet Lawrence to get his first moto win of the season. This is the battle to watch, though. Hunter had a tough time in that corner. At about five, six bike lengths before he can be back on the rear fender of Shimoda. Gosh, we've seen it time and time again this year how close the racing has been. Even if you don't have a lot of passing, riders just pushing each other to the limits. And these two have had a lot of those great battles. Moto 2 of the season in California came down to these two in the last lap. That time, Hunter was able to make the pass. Can yeah. he do it again? These guys' heart rates are running up probably 190-ish right now. Final lap, Hunter's trying to bridge this gap and Unreal. make the pass. Um, it's This is a position, if you're in Hunter's position right now, oh, see, there's that outside line able to close up a little bit more. Side by side, down the hill. Up he's going to cross up. Oh, he's got him side by side. No, can't make the pass. Too tight down there. Another attempt from Hunter. A really good strategy by Joe. Knew that he did wasn't going to fade out at the top of that hill. It would have left the door open for uh, Hunter. And both, of course, slipping sideways out of that very slick corner. Can't really make a move here. Hunter trying to set himself up for these jumps. You know they're going to air it out. Not this one, but this big single coming up. And Here it is. Two lappers in front of us. Yes. And a couple of passing zones after this area as they head downhill. They go to the top. Hunter's right there. Oh, Joe, a little short on the big jump. That brings Hunter right onto his rear fender. They got to negotiate lap traffic. There is Justin Cooper going to collect his first moto win of the year. Hunter, a big send down to the inside. There's the checkered flag for Cooper with the moto win. Can Hunter do something? Joe's going to protect on the inside going into the whoops. There's Jet Lawrence. Second, is it enough for the overall? It is. Shimoda holds off Hunter Lawrence. And Jet Lawrence, not his best track, not his best day, yet he wins the overall again. Wow. The maturity, like I said before, puts himself in a good position, doesn't override the motorcycle, uh, keeps the mistakes to a minimum, and it, you know, not a great first moto, but ends up with the overall. With two two scores, and that is symbolic of how his day went. Other riders had him, but again, he puts the pieces together, and as we said throughout the year, except for the race where his engine blew, he's won every overall this year. Now it's seven out of eight. That is a, a very hard thing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you were pretty dominant in the 250 class, but seven out of eight, uh, that is rare air. Hasn't gotten the lion's share of the moto wins. You know, one time James Stewart, I think, went 23 out of 24 in this class. Today he only goes 2-2, but seven out of eight overall still speaks volumes. And poor Hunter Lawrence, last week, Maybe could have won both motos, the way it shook out, didn't happen. Could have won the overall today, the way it shook out, didn't happen, and it goes to Hunter Lawrence. Well, could have went to Hunter Lawrence, it goes to Jet again. Check out five-year-old Tanner Smelker from Colorado Springs, Colorado, turning laps on his 16 E-Drive. And if you want to be on a future broadcast, scan that QR code you see on the screen and submit your video entry. Summer is here, and Stasic is committed to providing track access to create memories with your little ripper. So Stasic has partnered with USA BMX. They'll provide a one-year complimentary USA BMX Stasic class membership for the purchase of any 12E or 16E Stasic in 2022. Go to stasic.co slash USA BMX to learn more or register your purchase. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. With a nationwide network of parts and care, Napa helps you get up and go. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Fantastic drama down the stretch here. Justin Cooper ends up with a second moto win.
But Jet Lawrence takes the overall win. Moves him into a tie for 12th all-time in this class with Eli Tomac. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas. Jet Lawrence, your overall winner. You're figuring out new ways to win these overalls each week. I think starting to think you're some sort of evil math wizard at this point. Yeah, I, uh, again, I just got lucky on that one. Uh, just that pace, I, I didn't quite have that pace just to catch Cooper. It was kind of, I found that limit and I couldn't quite close him. So I tried to uh, try to see if I could flow more so instead of trying to hard charge everything, get a flow and try and link stuff together. But then the, the rear, rear of the bike started beating up a little bit more. So I'm like, you know what? I, I was kind of keeping an eye on Hunter. I'm like, hey, if he gets him, that sucks. But if he doesn't, it's good. But um, no, I'm happy to get another overall win. Uh, it was definitely, uh, I wasn't the fast out there this, uh, like the other ones. The other ones I felt like I could manage a little bit better, but these ones like, well, let's just hope I get lucky on this one. So, uh, no, nah, thanks to the team and everyone. So, uh, no, nah, cheers. Finding new ways to win every week, guys. Yep, 2-2, two, two, getting it done. Like I said, the now tied for 12th all-time for wins in this class with none other than Eli Tomac, former class champion. Let's go to Lucas Oil Race Recap, show you how this one was won. And for Justin Cooper, right off the start. Yeah, I got a good hole shot here. Ran uh, the Honda boys out wide, controlled this inside, and it was his race the entire race. Yeah, impressive for Cooper to get his first moto win of the year. Here's the battle. Hunter Lawrence going after Joe Shimoda to try to dig this one out. Yeah, I thought he was going to be able to get up the inside there. Joe was able to fend him off, and then here goes Hunter just pushing uh, the front wheel and going down. And that ended it as far as the overall hopes. Now, we did put in a last-ditch effort to almost get the overall win back. But your first moto winner ends up finishing the one in fourth. And then this pass by Jet over Shimoda puts him in his second. Got him on the inside, and the two two scores on the day going to give Jet Lawrence the uh, overall win. Here's Hunter's last ditch attempt on Shimoda. So close, but not, not couldn't get it done. I thought he was going to be able to go up the inside here, but uh, Joe was able to hold it in. Totally different second moto for Justin Cooper, a distance distant fourth in moto one. Wins moto number two by five and a half seconds. That is his 13th career moto win. And also, that is his 29th career podium, 11th all-time in this class. Send it back down to JT. Justin Cooper, that had to feel good. First moto win since Hangtown last year. Welcome back. Yeah, it's great to be back. Uh, that, was, that was more like it. I felt like after practice, I had the speed today and just, uh, yeah, didn't get off to the best start and didn't make moves quick enough. My intensity was a little bit off in Moto 1 and made a few different changes for Moto 2. And I just, I felt like it went easier than the first Moto. I was just in my own flow. And before I knew it, I had a good gap. And I just uh, managed the race from there. It was a really fun race. The track was fun. The crowd was awesome. And uh, we have some weeks off now. So I wish we'd get right back to it. But it's good to end it like this, uh, just shy of the win. But. Yeah, we'll come back swinging the Unadilla, the hometown race. Just got to be up to the whole Sour Racing Yamaha team to uh, for giving it uh, their, their all. And it's uh, it's showing now. We're making our way back up here, and it's it's feeling more normal. So, yeah, thank you to them. Thor, Alpine Star, um, Toyota of Escondido, 100%. Dunlop, you know, my mechanic, my fiance, my whole family. Just uh, It's been a tough road. Let's keep this going. Well, you can tell by the smile on his face, he is happy to be back up on top today. No doubt, finally got that moto win this year, and the next race at Unadilla, that is his home state in New York. Here's how the overall turned out. He scored 44 points with a 2-2. That just edges the 4-1 and the 1-4 for Cooper and Lawrence. Send it back to the podium. Hunter Lawrence, tip over, cost you. I feel like we're having the same conversation each week. The riding is clearly not the problem, but almost got Joe Shimoda there. I think you knew that was for the win for the overall, right? Yeah, I did. I was uh, pushing. It was like a seven second uh, gap, I think. And I had to bridge that and it was tough. I had to dig deep. Uh, track this, this place is honestly scary. Like it's so high speed. And then you come into the, the shadows and it's just pitch black and you can't see anything. So um, no, happy with my riding and stuff, but obviously got to clean up them little mistakes. So uh, yeah. Well, the riding, as I said, is not the problem. Hunter Lawrence just got a couple of small things to fix, and maybe he's your next winner. And he might have been faster than Jet today, but he ends up losing one point in the series standings. He came in down 27. He's down 28. Cooper solid now in fourth with that Moto win. To Motosport.com upcoming schedule. We have one more race today from Washougal, so stay with us. And then we'll take two weekends off and be back for Unadilla on August 13th.
That's a wrap from our 250 class. Stay with us for 450 Moto2 coverage. The Australians love it. Jet Lawrence still on top in the 250s.